everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Can you say Happy New Year to each other? <laughs> great, great. Happy New Year. We wish you Happy Praise New God. Year. I hope that you have a victorious and faith-filled 2013 and welcome you to the service. Oh, bless you, brothers and sisters. Let's give it a one time for God and true parents. Amazing. Isn't it great to, to praise God together? It's so important. You know, oh, today, actually, we're going to start with some prayer. Let's pray together. Dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, you brought us together from so many different paths and, Father, different histories. And, Father, you've connected us to your original source, your true love, Father. Your original Adam and your original Eve, Father. Now we are blessed families, Father. And, Father, we pray that this kingdom may come. Father, the kingdom that Jesus wished, longed for, Father, to see on this world where you could dance with joy, Father, on this world. Father, where it, it is taken away from the dominion of Satan and returned back to your authority and your love, Father. We thank you so much, dear Lord. Guide us today. Make none of these words our own, but Father. Let us, let us use us as your instruments, Father. Convey to us your heart and your message. We pray all these things together as central blessed families in our own names. Amen and Aju. Welcome, brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you today about kingdom building. Um, as you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been really unpacking the parables of Jesus, particularly Matthew 13 we've been focusing in on. And really, a lot of these parables, if you look at them sort of as a whole, you have the parable of the sower, you have the parable of the weeds, you have the parable of the hidden treasure, you have the parable of the, of the merchant finding pearls, you have the parable of the yeast, you have the parable of the fishing net, all these things. And these things seem very unrelated. I mean, I remember doing, trying to do a sermon on this couple years ago, and I, I completely gave up because I couldn't connect them together. But really, after realizing and after Father visiting, visiting me and, and returning resurrection, it's to be so clear, you know, that all oh, the center of his teaching, really the secret core of his teaching, which he talked so much about, but we had ears we could not hear, we had eyes we could not see, he talked about so clear is, boom, absolute sex. So clear. The holiness of the sexual organs, right? And um, when we understand this sort of password, we understand the purpose of creation. We understand the fall, which is the misuse of the sexual organs, right? And then the restoration, restor is trying to restore the original family, restore the original husband and wife position. Um, then we really sort of un can unlock these parables. A couple weeks ago at OSDP lecture and also in Chicago, we unpacked the parable of the weeds, where Jesus is very clear. He's talking about a farmer that's sowing seeds in a field. Um, all, all, always metaphors father used for, uh, for uh, you know, um, husband and wife. And then in the night, in the middle of the night, an enemy came. The enemy comes and sows weeds in the field. And Jesus says very clear that enemy is the devil. He, he, he names him directly. Who planted the weeds? Who planted the weeds that continue to come down through generation and generation? See, this is talking exactly about the fall of man. So Jesus as a son of God, he knows. He knows the fall. He knows how it happens. He knows Satan is using the most powerful force. And we looked at that last week, uh, two weeks ago, when we looked at the parable of the hidden treasure and also the parable of the merchant finding pearls. Remember where the merchant, he finds that pearl and he sells everything that he has. He gives away everything. Also the man who finds the hidden treasure in the field, he sells everything, his, all his land, to, to, to buy that, that, that piece of land with the hidden treasure. And we looked, about, we looked at all throughout history, different cultures across barriers, all boundaries. We see all these stories of love. We looked at Romeo and Juliet and Helen of Troy. We looked at all these different stories that show that people are willing to sacrifice their life, their status, their authority, their power, everything for love. That's the only thing they're willing to throw away everything for. Right? And then, of course, that, the parable is unlocked there. Today, I want to draw your attention to the parable of the sower because I think Jesus gives us very powerful wisdom here. Let's look at this together. This is verse 3. Then he told them many things in parables 
saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. Sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Okay, and then Jesus then almost exegetes. He, only, he looks at his own parable, then describes it. Let's start in verse 19. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short while. When or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among thorns refers to someone who hears a word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. I mean, when we understand that true Father, as he comes to the Lord of Second Advent, he, re he to reveal the symbols and parables of Bi the Bible, to reveal and unlock this, the, the messages of Jesus, right? Actually, get back to the root of what is most powerful, um, we see that, of course, when, how are we going to build the kingdom? We know it's through the power of absolute sex. That is the power. That is also how Father tried to unite North and South Korea, by the way, remember? Where he was trying to bless North and South Koreans together, or Japanese and Koreans. All these enmity, all these hatred nations, American. America and Japan, or all these enemy nations, he would bless them. This is the power of what? This is the power of the blessing, we can say, more specifically. The power of love, more specifically. What is it? The power of sex is the power of that's what it is. That's what it is, right? It's the power of absolute sex. And from the power of sex comes life, love, and lineage, right? True love is there in a true uh, married relationship. Eternal husband, wife. Life is there, brings forth children, and lineage is there. Your descendants come from there, okay? So we in this world have been so conditioned to see and understand this central essence, this central topic as defiled, okay? Jesus is saying, he's, look, at all, look at the four different types he's talking about. He's talking about the people on the path. Uh, the people on the path are represented by people who hear the message but doesn't come in. It's still their heart and their hearts are calloused. They may say, ooh, that's too, that's too strong. I don't know about that. You know, they, don't, they can't hear that kingdom coming in. So the, the birds just come. The devil, he says, snatches it away from their heart. Okay, then we have the rocky, the rocky soil, where the rocks are, you know, but the soil is shallow. So the seed of the kingdom comes in, they're excited. Hey, good sex, I like that, right? But then they don't have the depth, they don't have the depth of soil. So what happens? Then they fall away quickly. They can't, that's, that can't take root, right? And so they can't understand the, what kind of holiness, what, how, what the sexual union is, how powerful and how holy that is. They can only understand it from that very limited wisdom. Okay, and that's why it doesn't last. Jesus also talk, talk, talks about the thorns. Look at this. Look how he says, where the thorns, it chokes the word. It chokes the message of the kingdom. The deceitfulness of wealth, all the things that are connected to the secular life. Right? There with money and sex and power, all these things that Satan has control of. It chokes the word. And so then again, the seed cannot take root. But he says, look, he says, the seed falling on good soil, he he. he connects the good soil with understanding. We have to have understanding. That helps, that keeps the soil. Then the, that prepares the soil to be deep. And then from there produces the crop. 
So understanding then the power of our marriage becomes very important. Not that we are just simply man and woman joined together for a particular purpose, namely just to have children. If, you, if your sexual organs are just for children, they would fall off after you can't have children, is what father would always say, <laughs> right? Marriage is so much more deeper, so much more profound. It has cosmic value and has a divine purpose and is connected to a divine providence. Yes. Do you see? And this kind of knowledge is essential in understanding the blessing understanding why we are blessed and why we from our families create the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen in here. Come on. You see? So this knowledge is very important. This knowledge of the kingdom. Knowledge of the blessing of the purpose of God. The fall. What Satan has used to destroy, dominate the world. We talked about it very open. We have to talk about sex on the pulpit. We have to talk about it open because Satan is the only one with all his sex education courses out there talking about sex everywhere. And and look, and wherever we go, we're going to go to a couple of those slides next. Uh, But how God has worked throughout history to restore the value of the sexual relation between husband, eternal husband and eternal wife. Amma, do you want to say something on that? Um, in daily life, it's so easy to forget how important and how precious our absolute sex is. You know, when we are just uh, sucked up into our you know chores, house chore, or in the work at at company, then we just forget about the how cosmic value mm. our absolute sex has, the union between husband and wife. Mm. So I really believe that spiritual practice every day, uh, things like a father always emphasize hundokke or a small prayer. It just uh, takes you know one or two minutes to prayer before your altar. It's, it gives the way to remind yourself how precious and how blessed we are as a central blessed family. That's the only ultimate gift that Heavenly Father and true parents gave us, I believe. That's right. And even if, even though that is so, look how much we are tempted, all right? Look how much we are tempted. Just like Jesus says of thorns, as we may hear this message, we go home, as soon as you turn on the TV, they even call it the boob tube, right? They even call it that. Right? I'm serious. That's what they call it here. That's what they call it. Okay, and you go home, you turn on your TV or your your computer, you're going to see sex is selling everywhere, right? We're going to, it's like the thorns, just choking out the word. We're, We're forgetting. We forget immediately. That's why we were talking about always being filled in our minds with good sex, absolute sex, always in our mind, right? The joy of it. And we hear the message, well, look, look, when we get to home, we may see, we turn on TV, you're going to see hit shows. These things promote bad sex. They glorify them. They make it look so hip, cool, happy. Everybody's enjoying it. Everybody's doing it. Come on, people. Get with the times. You're not living in medieval ages anymore. You're modern. Come on, right? They're trying to make you feel like everybody's doing it. Now, especially our kids. Especially our kids. You guys may not watch it, but our kids are watching it. That's, that's definitely for sure, right? So look at some of these shows. I, I typed in on the internet, sexy shows on TV to try to find out what kind of shows are on TV. And a couple of these came up. Look at, look at a couple, some of these shows that come up. This is true, blood. This is a show about vampires. And they have sex with human beings. And they bite them and they make them into vampires. And apparently, this is a huge hit. <laughs> In one of the blogs that I read about this, there was, they said, supernatural sex. This is how they're promoting it. Right? And some editors, writers were writing about this. This is bad sex, right? Look, listen to this. Spiritual beings having sex with human beings. Doesn't that sound similar to the fall? Spiritual beings having sex with physical beings. You see like this? This is, this is very interesting. He's, who's the creator of these things, right? You know the fall of man. What's happening here? It's like right back there, okay? Look at these other ones. Some other ones. The client list. Oh my goodness, this is shocking to see in church. Can you believe it? Your kids are seeing this. This is the tame version. This is what, how they advertise this show. You understand? So you're going to see this on buses. You may see this on magazines. This is how they advertise it, let alone when you watch the program, what you're going to see. I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't see that. I don't want, we don't have TV. Okay? <laughs> There's a reason why I don't have TV. 
<laughs> my kids, we don't want them near this stuff, right? So, of course, then, what is this? This story is about, apparently, uh, somebody who loves their husband, and she's a, a part of a, mas a massage uh, company, but they do much more than massaging, and so they have a client list, right? Wow. Oh, yeah, look. And this is, everybody's watching, millions, millions of viewers. You understand? All your kids probably know this. Go ask them at home. You heard about this. They say, well, they'll probably tell you no, but they'll know in their head. <laughs> right? This is what is so mainstream. This is the sex that's everywhere. Bad sex everywhere. Literally, it's like, it's like literally a brothel, right? Is what she's running. Okay? And this is so mainstream. It's so popular. It's so cool, people. Right? Okay, look at this other one. Look at the name. Californication. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Blatant. It's unabashed. It's, it is unapologetic. It's celebrating bad sex. This, the story is about this guy who is married. He's married. He's a writer. But he can't stop his habits of drugs and alcohol and casual sex. He's married. He has kids or whatever. But he, can't, he has all these habits, which he can't suppress. And this is what, these are the kind of shows you can see which are being promoted. Now, the reason why I'm showing it in church is because without it, maybe some of you would never even know these exist. <laughs> right? That's why it's important to know how the devil is talking, how he's talking to our kids, our grandchildren, right? Anybody who's living and watching TV raised up four hours of TV a day. He spends more time with them than we do in a year, maybe. <laughs> right? Some of, some of us, that's not good, but we've got to change that. See, this kind of bad sex is being promoted. It's being fantasized about everywhere. This is being advertised. It's being played. It has season one. Season two is up. Ooh, the, wait for the next season. It's coming next. You can't wait to see what's under the covers on this one, right? All these kind of things. Always about bad sex. It's selling quick. Satan knows itself. He knows the power of sex. This is the one topic. We talked about it many times now. The one topic that crosses every denomination, every religious boundary, every demographic boundary, every age group boundary, every linguistic boundary, every national boundary, every ethnic boundary. This is the one topic that everybody thinks about in their lifetime, continuously, even though, even though you get old. Older, I'm sorry, older. <laughs> you keep thinking, you get saturated by it, right? But look at what it does. Look at what it does. These kind of things make you fantasize. They make you dream. They make you envision, visualize about other sexual relationships other than your spouse. You see? They make you want to pursue them. What is this? This is like individual sin. You see? Then also... It makes you think that everybody's doing it. Hey, people, do relax. It's mainstream. It's just sex. Haven't you heard this on TV a lot? It's just sex. Relax, you religious people. You hear all these people saying that, right, on TV, on the talk shows and everything? Collective. Oh, everybody's doing it. Relax. Collective sin. Satan's hitting you not only individual sin, he's hitting you with collective sin, right? He's making you feel less guilty about sinning because he's making us believe everybody's doing it. Come on, don't you want to be hip? Don't you want to be cool? Don't you want to be modern, right? This is what he's doing. He's sucking us in also, into, also into collective sin. He makes us, if you practice this, what happens? It becomes hereditary. That, this tradition gets passed down. What happens? We see it statistically. People who divorce, their children have a higher percentage of divorce. People who cheat in their marriages, their children have a higher percentage of cheating when they get married. They can't commit to a relationship. It becomes hereditary. It becomes a tradition that gets passed down through generations. You see, Satan is winning. Not only first gen, second gen, third gen, over and over again. Satan is using the power of sex because it's so powerful. It, everybody's thinking about it all the time, saturated by it, you see? Nobody's talking about it. Though. This is the problem. Nobody's talking day in and day out to combat this overflood, this flooding of sex that comes and hits you every, in, a, in the modern world, every which way, on your iPhone, on your iTablet, on your mini iPad, on your big iPad, on your computer, <laughs> everything, right? Hits you everywhere.
And this is, Satan knows this. He's doing this purposely. Why? Because he's targeting. He's targeting the seeds that God is sowing. The seeds of the kingdom that begin through not bad sex, but what is it? Through good sex, absolute sex. In true husband, true wife, blessed central family, locked, united by God, has eternal purpose, divine purpose, divine providence, cosmic value. That's the place Satan wants to attack. He wants to attack our marriages. He wants to attack our sexual organs. Right? That's what Father always just said. He's trying to tempt you there. That's where he's trying to tempt you, not in your mind. He's trying to tempt you there is where he's trying to tempt you, right? Um, but do you want to, and of course, and if any of these sins are committed and realized, then of course, we then can inherit original sin. We can, again, go back to the fall of man. We become fallen. Yes. Right? So all these sins, the four types of sin, we inherit them all. If we don't have combat, if we don't have a, have a counter proposal to this incredible flood, I mean, you want to say something on that? Yes, I'd like to talk about, um, I'd like to mention about pornography, why it's so harmful. And we women usually think pornography, these sex images are really, you know, we have a guts feeling, we have a hatred feeling toward it. Because, you know, women feels that uh, pornography uh, portrait woman as like a sex object or sex toy. So mm. we don't like that feeling. That's why our pornography is bad because of that. But interestingly, you know, whether we like it or not, men always attracted to women. That's how God created. Otherwise, you know, husband will not be attracted to their wife, and that's going to be problematic. And that we can't do good sex. So it's always the case, man sees woman as a sexual partner. But mm. the thing is, uh, more, the, the, but the uh, harmful thing about pornography, these sex images, they actually, uh, people see it's a value less. It doesn't have any value in it. But it's actually value filled with mm. the, uh, bad sex. Yeah. They actually promote bad sex. They cheat you to your children bad sex. So, you know, it pushes boundary. Just like uh, my husband said, you know, it's okay. Group sex is okay. See, look how they're doing it. Homosexuality is okay. Child pornography is okay. So everybody's mm -hmm. doing it. That's why it's actually a great educational tool for Satan to teach bad sex. Mm. That's why, in the end, uh, these pornography, these images are really harmful to our children and viewers in the end. Yeah, that's an excellent point because it's value-filled. People think it's valueless. It's value-rich. It's rich with Satan's values. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's rich. It's full of it. So people get addicted to that. They don't even know they're transforming. Yes. Right? They don't even know they're, they're starting to look at whatever, whatever. It just changes them. Just, they don't even understand that power. Right? So this Satan knows. But see, good sex is opposite. It's, it has, in good sex, we, it's within the eternal commitment of, of holy marriage. Eternal. It's in the commitment that not till we die only. It's eternal. Our love is eternal. We're all looking for eternal love, aren't we? All those lovely, ro lovely romance stories, all about eternal love. This is what everybody actually dreams for. Mm -hmm. Good sex is that. Is, the, is within the marriage. Eternal, everlasting, unchanging, right? And it's deep, it's profound. Like I mentioned, it's connected to a cosmic value, a divine purpose, connected to the purpose of the whole created world, connected to the entire mission of man and woman, of humankind, right? It's connected to God himself as he created us in his own image, man and woman, male and female, as, as Michael, uh, Michael mentioned this morning, uh, this, this evening. In other words, Father would be so blatant. See, in, in when he would, when he would um, speak, we, we got the translated version. We got it in English. So you, we, you guys would hear, you know, sexual organ, or you would hear uh, convex and concave. But Father was more blunt than that. He was way more blunt. And sometimes you'll hear me say penis and vagina. But that's very clinical. Father would speak even more blunt than that. <laughs> I'm not going to state that today, but okay. But he would be like more about that, right? But this, think about it. None of the external secular sex educators, sexologists, they're not shy about penis and vagina. But, but any, if you have to be a religious person, any holy person, oh my God, I can't say that. That's the problem, do you see? It's the holy people who have holy marriages and practicing in the blessing of marriage and having happy marriage filled with happiness and joy, 
they should be speaking this word the most. That's what Father was always doing. See, that's why Father was talking about the good sex ministry all the time. I really, I look at his ministry, it's really the good sex, absolute sex ministry. He's talking about sex morning, noon, and night. Even when he's sleeping, he, he would murmur. He's talking about absolute sex. <laughs> right? That's, how, that's how, how vehement you have to be to battle the onslaught of Satan. You know, this, it's a real holy battle. I want to look at some of his, his, uh, his words in Chen Sung Young. This is 1722. Let's read this together. Let's, let's read this together. The sexual organs are the most holy place where God dwells. The cells of the love organs of man and woman are the most minute. To have the feelings of all the cells of that part through which runs all paths of love that unites mind and body. To enter that world as one of its elements. This is the aim of all beings in the created world. Then where do man and woman unite? Through the sexual organs. That is where man and woman directly unite and become one with God. Through the fall, the organs came to be the worst thing. But originally, they are extremely holy. When man and woman open that door, the world is opened. And when the door is closed, the world is closed. When they are happy, the world and the entire universe are happy. They are extremely holy, Father says, they're holy. We go and bow before holy altars, or we go and bow before holy items or relics. When was the last time you bowed before your spouse's sexual organ? Is what Father's saying, it's holy. It's the most holy place. That's where your descendants are, right? Your grandchildren, etc. all your descendants come from there. Okay, and he's going to talk about grandparents in a couple, in a couple, in the next two, okay? Let's look at the second one. This is 1720, let's read together. Until now, people have regarded the sexual organs as something bad. But now I am teaching that it is the holy original palace. How amazing are the male and female sexual organs. Without them, true love, life, and lineage, and conscience cannot be connected. Can God's kingdom begin without them? It cannot. Only through that organ is the world of freedom, happiness, peace, and unity possible. Wow. He said, can the kingdom begin without them? He says, it cannot. So we're talking about building the kingdom. We're talking about, okay, how are we going to build the kingdom? We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this or we're going to do that. Or we're going to do service. We're going to do that. Father's saying, it starts right from your sexual organ, from your blessing. That's where the kingdom begins, right? And we know that when husband and wife are powerful, strong, God is dwelling there. Guess what? Children have amazing education. I remember all the time when I, we were serving Father for the last two years, that many times I would help Father, you know, put his clothes on. He was 93 years old. So, of course, everybody know, understands. He, he needs to put my, I have to help him put his clothes on, his underwear on. You know, I just, some other she's there, we help wipe him down, you know, etc. And, you know, I remember when he's, when he's wearing his clothes with us, he's like, okay, I'll give, me, give, me, give me the pants or give me my belt. <laughs> like this. It's not so wonderful. But when mother's helping him, he's so much happier. <laughs> you know, when mother's, he's 93 years old, right? But mother's helping him, then he's so much happier. He's holding her, he's touching her, you know, he's touching all of her, her breast, and he's touching her, you know, her, her, holy, her holy palace, and everything. This is in front of his baby boy. I'm sitting right there, I'm sitting right there. No shame. You see, he's totally free. That's what I'm talking about, freedom, right? It's the beginning of freedom. He's free. No shyness like Adam and Eve. They were free before they knew, right? even before they, they sinned. They, naked, they were naked. They were unashamed. He was, Father's like, he was free, right? He was they're so happy because when I saw that, and Father's 93, Mother's, you know, uh, in her, what, 70, uh, 70, right? And then it's so cute to see that. And so I'm looking, I'm, like, I'm laughing in the corner. I'm saying, that's so cute, you know? And it looks so wonderful. What a beautiful education. Sometimes we'd have the grandchildren there running around, <laughs> you know? This kind of education, this is so free and natural. You see, it's, un, it's not shame-filled with this kind of, this aura of, of bad sex, right? And peace and unity Father's talking about. Let's look at Chen Sung Young 17, 24. Let's read this together. We should be eternal and unchanging like God. Love is absolutely unique, eternal and unchanging like God. 
and the place it settles is the sexual organs. No one knew this until now. That's how precious the genitals are. Wow, who speaks like that? Who speaks so clear? Father speaks so, he speaks the truth. Because guess what? Those genitals are on everybody's mind, right? <laughs> That's the problem. Satan controls that power. That's what Father's talking about. Precious, the genitals, precious your holy palace for your spouse, right? A family of happiness is formed when the sexual organs of the grandparents, parents, husband and wife, and also your sons and daughters in the future are in union, of course, with their spouse is what he means. <laughs> if that is broken, the whole family falls apart. And we see it. How many families break apart by cheating? How many? How many families break apart by adultery? How many families break apart by porn or whatever it is? You know what I mean? So many marriages. And then what happens to the kids? Right? You know how painful it is when the parents divorce. Who are the, ki who are the people that are wishing for them to, to get remarried all the time? It's the kids. Or the kids may blame themselves. Look how families destroyed, demolished, incinerated by the power of bad sex. Right? Mm -hmm. Father's, father's taking this straight on, okay? Let's look at it. If that is broken, the whole family falls apart, okay? Here we go. The grandmother has taken hold of the grandfather's sexual part and will try never to let it go. Praise God. Wow. And the grandfather has occupied the grandmother's and will try never to lose it. Everything, love, happiness, freedom, and so on, begins from the sexual organs. We saw our little kids, you know, we had little Shimpiani running around, father and mother in, you know, when they're changing, when father after he's, you know, speaks, he's all sweaty and he's changing. And Shimpian would see him. He doesn't care. He's a little baby. He sees his grand, granddaddy naked. He sees granddaddy's naked and he sees grand, grandmother seeing him naked. There's no shame in that. He doesn't know that. Right? In that kind of environment, then we can, we can start learning. The, the one thing, what we found, that has changed our life tremendously is after we started preaching about good sex because I was actually kind of shy about preaching about this topic before Father came, so clear in that vision. But after that, then I'm now I'm, you can tell I'm pretty bold about it now. I'm bold about penis and vagina right now. I'm very, very bold about it. I'm very bold, okay? Um, but you know, but Father would, after he came, then I became much more clear, but I realized that it transformed my life with my children. Totally changed it. My kids are already in teens. We got two of them already in teens. They're teenagers. We know what they're seeing in school all the time. We know how they're saturated with it everywhere they go. All right? And it's such an awkward topic. How do you talk to your kids about sex? It's so, it's, it's embarrassing. You know, how do you do this? But after the good sex ministries and fathers just, you know, told me very clearly you preach about it and to be open about it. Then I, we have no problem. We've been talking to our kids about sex all day long with our kids. We had so many breakthroughs with our kids. Things, this kind of topic that we're so shy, we never would talk about with our kids. We didn't know how to approach it. How are we going to talk about this stuff? We want them to get blessed in a couple of years maybe, but how are we going to, you know, how do we teach them this stuff? It's so open. The first time we're talking about, you know, penis and vagina. You have a penis too. They, I know I have one. <laughs> you know, talking about it so open. And this has transformed the way we interact with our kids. It's absolutely amazing. Amma, you want to say something on that? Yeah, I'm sure, you know, when whoever has uh, the children, we have a five and two of them, uh, he mentioned, two of them are already teenager. And, you know, it's a great struggle for parents how to approach this, how to even, you know, take this subject out. But after, you know, doing this good sex ministry, it's so easy to approach them. It's a very positive way to approach them. That's right. You know, before blessing, you have to keep your purity. And after, you know, blessing, you have something to look forward to it. You have a good sex. You know, you have, you know, this beautiful, blessed family life that through parents and Heavenly Father is going to bestow upon you. How Praise great is that? How Praise joyous God. is that? And we've been, you know, blessed the family. We've been really focused on the negative effect of of a fall of man and how That's destructive right. it is. We've been focused on that so much, so heavily. But now, you know, after this revelation and 
which was always there, but we were just uh, not dense enough, to, <laughs> we were too dense to, you know, um, to receive it, to accept it, and to talk about it freely. But after this, we, we can really talk to our children very freely about penis and vagina, and it's very natural thing. <laughs> and, you know, and they know, they, all the friends in the school, they talk about this. And all once you talk about all this to your friends, you will surprise what they tell you, what wow. they talk about at school. Actually, you know, knowing about that one thing, but you know, hearing from their mouth, it's very surprising thing come out. Amazing. We need to clarify this as a good sex. We need to suggest them alternative choice. Otherwise, they are only influenced by this bad sex that, that is bombarded by media and their friends. So please, you know, after this, you have to make a time to talk about this and to, to approach this to, to your children, please. And yes. I, I'm sure you will have a wonderful time <laughs> with your children. And fathers, fathers <laughs> got to do it. Fathers have to do it. Yes. You can't say, oh, talk to mom about that. You can't do that. That's what we usually do, men. We cannot delegate it to mom. We should never do it. There are so many studies, even the most liberal studies, that show if the father, that children have the most impact from a male, from a male on moral values. So fathers, we have to man up and we have to talk to our kids about penis. We got to talk, to talk to them about absolute holy good sex. We got to be the ones in the home that take control away from Satan Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and give them holiness in their mind, right? Yes. Because who's monopolizing in their brain? Who's monopolizing the topic of sex, which is rampant. That topic is everywhere, middle school, high school, college. Oh my God, it's every day, every minute, every second. Who has the monopoly? It's all bad sex. Now somebody's got to preach. Even though you preach on once a week, the pastor can't do your job for you. We got to be talking about good sex in our home. That's what Father making us do the hundoke. You see, talking about sexual organs with our children. You don't, it's amazing. Our life has transformed. I have never been this open talking about penis and vagina with my children, ever. And it is amazing the experience we're having. They're sharing, they're opening up all these things we never even knew. So healthy, so holy. And now they have a, a clear view of marriage that's holy and happy and totally filled with joy. And they have, they're ready. They're saying, okay, I know why I'm going to get blessed. I know why I want to be a blessing. And so today, if we're really going to talk about building the kingdom, brothers and sisters, we have to get back to the core of it all, the core that's on everybody's mind, the core that Satan uses to dominate everybody. Even when you get out there, you're going to start getting hit by it again. It's right back. We got to get back to Father's words, get back to the holiness of marriage, get back to the holiness of true love, get back to give and, take, give and receive relationships, get back to living for the sake of each other, serving each other, and that starts where, where Father's talking right clear, from the holy palace, the holy royal palace, the sexual organs of, of husband and wife, that's where it begins, and then it spreads through the rest of the world and throughout the cosmos. And even God is in joy as well. Let's give it up one time for God and true parents. Thank you very much.